Racism and poverty are very different, but they are actually connected in many ways. Two Toledo residents explain through their experience before and after segregation. Kaylee Kirby with that story tonight. It wasn't all that long ago where blacks and whites were separated because of the color of their skin. I have a dream. Legally, segregation ended in 1964. Betty Miller and Dr. Larry Hammy remember it well. In Alabama, I experienced separation based on race, but we didn't have really a lot of interactions. Uh, we were the first to enroll in the University of Toledo's uh, psychology program. And I think it was kind of novel for them, and it certainly was novel for me because there were no black faculty members on the faculty there at that point. Miller came to Toledo from Selma, Alabama, and used to work as a teacher at Toledo Public Schools. Dr. Hammy came from North Carolina under affirmative action. He was the first black graduate from UT's clinical psychology program. In the 60 years since segregation ended, they say discrimination and prejudice remains. You think that races don't meet? They meet. I guarantee you the Klan is meeting somewhere right now. Both Hammy and Miller believe there is not much of a difference from then and now. They say it's just shifted. If you live in the South, white people will tell you they didn't like you. You didn't have to guess about where you stood. You knew. The black experience today is similar and strongly rooted in America's history. The African-American bore all of the weight of integration. You know, the white people didn't come to the black school. The white people didn't move to the black neighborhood. They didn't come to shopping. So when you bear that kind of burden, it takes a toll on you. It's a cycle that's been repeated for generations. If you are not the victim, you don't see it happening, or you don't really know how it's actually perpetrated. Many of the institutions that we deal with, there, there is called, there's this whole idea about systemic discrimination or systemic racism. Take housing, for example. Once poverty was identified, again, I feel like that sort of was a way to discriminate. Miller says there was a barrier, and it was based on your race. I had accepted the, the idea that I was poor because it had just been said enough times. I was probably not poor. Dr. Hammy says a lot of it is still happening because of fear, ignorance, and not wanting to understand someone who's different than you. The system is not broken. The system is working exactly the way it was supposed to work. That people were going to discriminate against and keep the, the African Americans and other minorities in a, in, in a low position. This, this, this system is not broken. It was created. It was created this work and, and, and it continues to function the way it was created. So how do we change it? Dr. Hemi believes a good start is through laws and conversations. The idea about uh, race relations and racism is a very, very touchy subject, and people talk about it, but they talk about it with people that they're comfortable with. So let's get uncomfortable, and let's have those conversations. We all need each other, because I bring something to the table that you don't. My black experience brings something to the table that your white experience alone doesn't. Reporting in Toledo, Kaylee Kirby, WTOL 11.